Tomo News presents Horrible Bosses. Indian migrant worker beaten to death by his own boss. Labor abuse of Indian migrant workers in Arab states is widely reported, but some are also treated terribly in their own country as well. Recent footage posted to the web shows a tied up worker being horribly beaten to death while hung upside down. To see our full report with footage from the video, click the link in the description. The India Times reports the original video was 34 minutes long, with snippets from it going viral. The worker, identified as Ram Singh from Kangkot in northwestern India, was accused of stealing something from work. His wife told the India Times that men forcibly took away her husband from their home a few days ago and threw his body on the road after beating him. Local police are investigating the incident and seeking those responsible for the beating. Employee dies from overwork after supervisor bombards her with orders via WhatsApp. A 40-year-old Taiwanese PR worker died from overwork after being constantly pestered with additional tasks, sometimes even after midnight, by her boss via WhatsApp. And even after she returned home from work, her manager would allegedly send her repeated messages using WhatsApp, barking marching orders well into the wee hours of the night and asking that the work be finished immediately. Eventually, the poor, unidentified employee's body simply couldn't take it anymore. She suffered a stroke outside her office building at some point last year between May and June and passed away a month later after falling into unconsciousness. The Taiwan Bureau of Labor Insurance on Thursday announced the results of an investigation confirming that the poor woman had died of overwork. Unpaid construction workers take chainsaw to building site. A pair of builders down under used chainsaws to rip through a partially built house under construction and filmed it on video as revenge for not being paid on time. The video posted to Facebook on the Uptrend Engineering and Construction page starts with the image of a chainsaw and reads, Builders who don't want to pay invoices. It then cuts away and shows one construction worker slicing through several wooden supports throughout a housing framework. The caption, We'll learn the hard way, then appears on the screen. The footage then shows a second construction worker ripping through the house in a similar fashion. It looks like both these guys hadn't been paid on time by their boss, so they did what any reasonable person would do and chainsawed everything instead. Uh, wonder when they're gonna get paid now? Bank employees publicly spanked for not exceeding expectations. Shanxi Rural Credit Cooperative said Monday it's looking into a spanking incident that occurred at a branch office in Changzi, China. A video of the spanking that went viral shows a trainer spanking employees on a stage with a plank for not exceeding expectations. The trainer is caught on tape asking each employee why they were ranked the lowest today, to which they answer, because I have not exceeded myself. <laughs> The trainer then spanks the naughty employees from behind. Ouch! Trainers also reportedly cut their employees' hair for not performing well. One Facebook commenter wrote, This is not just punishment. It's purely personal humiliation. I wonder what kind of leader this academy will produce. But the Shanxi Rural Credit Cooperatives announced that this was a breakthrough in performance training session for their employees. Another commenter wasn't surprised. She wrote, Why is this so difficult for people to comprehend? Americans take for granted the rights they have. China is communist. Public beating for poor performance? That is communism. Uh, sure, Michelle. The bank said it had stopped the training sessions, asked the Leadership Academy and its trainer to openly apologize, and suspended several managers from the branch. The bank is also considering monetary compensation for the employees who were spanked. But this is all in hindsight. What we want to know is what commenter Kyle Richards so eloquently asked, What the f*** is wrong with people? Hospice CEO ordered nurses to give patients lethal overdoses. A recent FBI probe found that a cruel hospice owner in Frisco, Texas tried to murder his patients as a cost-saving measure. 
Brad Harris, an accountant and owner of Novus Health Services, Inc., reportedly wanted to say bye-bye to patients who were taking too long to die in order to save money. He directed nurses to execute the patients by upping their medications, going as far as asking one nurse to up a poor patient's dosage by four times the maximum. The nurse said she would, but never did, and told NBC5 that doing so would have killed the patient. Harris allegedly wanted the patients to die as fast as possible in hopes of retaining more of the annual Medicare and Medicaid payments given to hospice facilities. According to what seems like a badly constructed policy, Medicare and Medicaid payments are subject to a cap based on the average length of stay. The FBI apparently started investigating Novus in 2014 because the company billed the government for unnecessary services and recruited patients that didn't need hospice services. The FBI had no idea that they were also going to uncover a murderous CEO. Foxy gym teacher fired for refusing threesome with her boss and her boyfriend. A former New York City gym teacher is suing after getting canned from the high school where she worked for, according to the suit, refusing to wet her whistle in steamy three-way action with her boss and the boss's boyfriend. Probationary gym teacher Carissa Gaylardo believes she angered her supervisor, Sophia Mimos, a tenured gym teacher at Riverdale Kingsbridge Academy in the Bronx. She says Mamos came on to her and has texts to prove it. <gasps> Gaylardo wasn't into the idea, but kinky Mamos doubled down. Gaylardo says she invited her in person to oil up for a menage en trois with her and her lover. The then 30-year-old teacher was sacked after Memos launched a probe into her relationship with a student as the two texted frequently. But Gaylato says the sex rejection is the true reason. Both the female student and her mother have filed affidavits supporting Gaylato, asserting she at no time behaved inappropriately. Nurse has brain implant. Her bosses need a transplant. Rebecca Sedans, age 49, sued her former employer, New York Presbyterian Hospital, for discrimination because she can't sue them for being just plain old stupid. Sedans has a deep brain implant which controls a Parkinson-like disease, which causes her to suffer from painful muscle contractions. When she began working at the hospital in 1998, the hospital was supportive and did not schedule her to work in units which had MRI machines. This is because electronic imaging machines cause Sedans' brain implant to malfunction causing seizures or a return of the painful muscle contractions which leave her immobilized. However, apparently Sedan's bosses, who work in the medical industry, forgot about that pesky little detail. They began scheduling Sedan to work in ICU units with MRI machines. Her requests and reminders about her brain implant fell on deaf ears because her bosses all seemed to have brain damage. After her first day working near the MRI machine, Sedan's muscle contractions returned. She blacked out for 26 hours and suffered from amnesia. Her neurosurgeon had to reprogram her device twice. So it seems quite reasonable that Sedan would refuse to return to working near an MRI machine ever again, but the hospital didn't see it that way. They felt that she was refusing to work and fired her. A Manhattan Supreme Court disagreed with the hospital and has awarded Sedan 4 million US for emotional trauma and punitive damages. Maybe Sedan's former supervisors need a brain implant that will give them electrical shocks when they're being unfeeling bastards. Teen with cancer fired from restaurant for requesting six weeks off for surgery. Think your boss is an asshole? Think you're having a rough day? Well, your boss isn't the manager of Rosebud Restaurant, and you don't have brain cancer. That's because you're not Jonathan Larson. He's a 19-year-old delivery driver for this Italian eatery in the Chicago suburb of Naperville. Or at least he was until his manager told him to just leave when he explained he needed time off work to undergo surgery to treat cancer. Larson has been diagnosed with a rare and aggressive cancer called multifocal myxopapillary ependymoma, which is attacking his brain and spine. After already undergoing several rounds of radiation therapy, Larson now has weakened bones and needs spinal surgery. This surgery and the recovery time necessary means Larson needs up to six weeks off work. When he explained this to his boss, Larson says he received this reply. Nah, by that time I already have another driver hired. Just leave. I have to make some phone calls. Having caught wind of this, sympathetic citizens are sticking it to the business with scathing messages on the review site Yelp. It seems the company has realized what a PR sh sandwich it's made for itself and has apparently offered Larson his job back according to a recent post on his Facebook page. Talk about horrible bosses. Come on, man, have a heart. 
Boss tries to cop a feel during job interview. Last week in Taizong, central Taiwan, a woman identified by her last name Chen went for a job interview as a receptionist. The owner of the company asked if she knew her measurements as they were not listed on her resume. Ms. Chen said she didn't know and the owner offered to take the measurements himself. Ms. Chen messaged a friend who called the police. The police arrived just in time as Ms. Chen was fleeing the office, allegedly after the boss attempted to grope her under the guise of taking measurements. The owner told police he was just trying to measure Ms. Chen for her uniform. Ms. Chen has filed a sexual harassment suit against him. Looks like he won't be hiring anyone anytime soon. Man on business trip sexually molested by general manager. A judge has finally ruled on a case of sexual harassment of a Taiwanese businessman who had been on a business trip in China when he was molested by his company's general manager. During a business dinner, the Taiwanese businessman, identified by his last name Tian, drank until he passed out. The general manager, Mr. Fu, and two other colleagues helped carry Mr. Tian back to his hotel room. Mr. Fu assured the other two men that he'd look after Mr. Jin and make sure that he was comfortable. After the other two left, Mr. Fu stripped the young man down to his boxers and told him he'd give him a massage to make him feel better. Eventually, Mr. Fu started massaging the brown rose between the young man's legs. He then inserted two fingers into Mr. Jin's anus. In court, Mr. Fu claimed that massaging the prostate was a traditional way to sober up and avoid a hangover. Thankfully, the judge didn't believe him and sentenced him to three and a half years in prison. Family emergency not enough to earn man time off. Mr. Huang, age 41, is the older of two sons who grew up in Taipei. Mr. Huang and his father both work construction jobs on sites away from their home. Mr. Huang's mother had been suffering from breast cancer and they needed the income he and his father provided in order to cover the medical bills. Mr. Huang's father took a construction job out of the country in order to cover his wife's medical bills and so that his younger son could afford to stay at home to care for her. Mr. Huang was at work when he received a phone call from his younger brother that their mother had died in her sleep at home. Distraught, his younger brother said he was going to kill himself. Panicked, Mr. Huang called his father and the police, then rushed to tell his supervisor. The supervisor told him he couldn't leave his job early. If Mr. Huang left in the middle of the shift, he risked getting fired. Mr. Wong told his supervisor he was leaving anyway, but he didn't have any money on him and it took him seven hours to walk back to his family home. By the time Mr. Wong arrived, police told him that they'd arrived too late. They'd found his mother in her bed, and his younger brother had first attempted to slit his wrists before finally hanging himself in a separate room. They found a suicide note left behind by the younger brother. A man in Houston, Texas, has filed a civil lawsuit against his former boss and colleagues for having endured months of taser attacks at work. He says, Bradley Jones worked at a car dealership where his fellow employees would sneak up on him and hit him with a stun gun, which was allegedly provided by the boss. It happened not once, but at least two dozen times over nine months. The so-called pranks were recorded and posted on YouTube, but have since been taken off. Jones became distracted by these pranks and was constantly looking over his shoulder at work. He said he couldn't relax even at home, thinking someone may sneak up on him behind the shower curtain. Jones's attorney said criminal charges could follow.